doing good. I really appreciate your time. I I love your performance so much in DD. So uh, I'm excited to chat about it. Let's start at the beginning. Obviously, you are not a newcomer to the industry by any means, but this is your first leading role. Uh, what was the audition process, and what were your first impressions of the script? Um, the audition was like really any other audition. Uh, you know, just got sent it by my manager. Uh, quickly looked over the script, sent it in. Well, then when I officially first got sent the, when I actually got sent the script and like the character breakdown and all that stuff. I kind of had this moment of realization that I was just like, man, like, I, this is going to be a hard and very difficult character to play, you know, because it's something that I've never done before. It's like out of my area of expertise, because like most of my time in my acting career, I've spent, I've literally only spent doing comedic characters, mostly. Um, and I guess in voiceover, I, yeah, it's still mostly comedic, right? And so this is my first time really doing something that was like mostly focused on a dramatic aspect. And so I was originally kind of scared, you know, I was nervous, I didn't really know how to approach this role. But eventually, through enough callbacks and testing, and this, even the Sundance labs of Sean, I eventually got this character down. And I came to enjoy it a lot more towards the actual making of the movie. Hmm. Are there ways that you saw yourself in Chris? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think the number one thing is that this movie is aiming towards relatability. And I think that the thing with Chris is that he is a teenager, like most people have been a teenager once in their life. And so what Sean really tried to snipe with and what I think is relatable for not just me, but for everyone is that <clears throat> is that, you know, this kid's insecure, he wants to fit in, he doesn't feel like he he belongs, you know, he feels like he's not comfortable, he's having a kind of an identity crisis, you know, and I think like, that's something that like, that like I took, right? That's something that I, 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 I took with that main core idea, and I put into Chris's character. And I think that's also something that literally everyone else can relate to. And I, I think that's the number one like thing, most important thing about this movie is that it's relatable, you know, especially Chris's character. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and I just spoke with Sean a little bit ago, and and, and he was talking about the environment that he wanted to create on set. Um, that he was he described it as like a summer camp sort of feel, very familial and and carefree. Uh, what was your experience on on the environment that he created? Incredible really it was just honestly incredible i mean like the the whole vibe of the shoot really was just like it didn't really feel like it was like work you know it felt like it was just us having fun while also just working at the same time you know and i think like the best the thing about working is if you can have fun right if you're just working to work you know that's that's like i mean it's no good you know like that i don't think that's an enjoyable experience but if you're working and you're also having fun while doing it which is what Sean accomplished. It it overall like helps with the whole vibe of the crew and the cast and everyone on there. And as well as it just makes the movie better, you know? And it makes everyone's like whole mood better, which improves is when which improves acting. So that's awesome. But well, tell me about working with Sean. Uh was there was there any specific piece of direction that you can remember that really helped unlock the character for you maybe? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that throughout the character breakdowns and all the talking that me and Sean went through, it's just the conclusion that I think we both came to is just the number one thing is that we want this character to be organic and to feel real, right? And to feel grounded. And uh, a direction he gave me a lot of the time, which I make fun of him for it because he gave me it all the time, right? Is uh, act like you've just been betrayed in the scene by someone who's important to you, right? Like your closest friend or someone who's really close to you or someone like that. And like, that's a note that was really, really essential. And it was super important. And it helped me a lot. Hmm. Yeah, it's so much of Chris is internal. Uh, like there are so many sequences where you don't necessarily have lines and you're just you're just uh, acting with with without dialogue. Uh, how did you prepare for some of those internal scenes and communicating with with just your body? I think that the most important use of um, those silent scenes was eyes, you know, like I think body language is important as well. But Sean really liked like focusing on our eyes mostly. 
like or the quick glances that we made to the side or just little looks that we had Sean liked to put into the movie and then it would show like something right it, w- it would mean something you know whether it's like oh distress or anger or like angst or sadness or like awkwardness even you know that's those little looks that we gave and it wasn't just me either it was people like Shirley it was Joan it was even like Nai Nai Waipo who plays Nai Nai you know like looks like those he included to make it actually feel real you know and like even though like in the movie really it's like I think that the dialogue is very important but the body language is also very essential Hmm. absolutely and and as as incredible as those dramatic scenes are there's plenty of this movie that is just hilarious and ridiculous yeah. uh i loved the the skate footage uh you being a filmer how much of that skate footage did you actually shoot what did he did he give you a camera for those moments not a lot to be honest uh I, sean filmed most of the skate footage which is actually really funny but um there is some skate footage that i filmed uh for example there's like the scene where um, Kyron, who plays Donovan, dodges the security guard, that's what I filmed. And I forcefully also may, had to make it look bad. So maybe not not a good rep for me as a filmer. But um, I mean, there's like, I, there's other smaller stuff that I filmed, you know, there's like, I think most of the, uh, the I mean, there's like some scenes, I mean, I can't really place it specifically, but like, there's just scenes where you're just like, all right, get, here, Isaac, take the camera and then just go film. And I was like, all right. What am I doing? He's like, just film it. I was like, okay, you know. But I there was a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff where you don't see me specifically on tape is what actually Sean was filming. So that's awesome. Well, you know, of course, the the, the movie takes place in two thousand eight. I was also in high school in two thousand eight. Uh, you've got you know all the all the hilarious technology from back then: AOL, Instant Messenger, MySpace, flip phones, all that. Uh, you were quite young in two thousand eight. Uh, any of those pieces of technology that you you wish we still had as you were playing around with them for the movie? Oh man, hmm. I mean, I really did love like maybe this is just me, but like I feel like it. I I really think there's no like way to unmodernize camcorders, you know. Like, I feel like there's just, like, this look and there's this aesthetic to camcorders that you just, like, you really can't, like, make better, you know? Mm. Like, the higher resolution it is on the camcorder, like, the less, like, camcorder it feels, you know? I think that also there's things, like, I mean, MySpace is super sick, you know? Like, I mean, I mean like, having your basically whole personality on th- there is, like, pretty cool. And I guess you could say it's the same thing for things like Instagram, but, like, I, I also wouldn't would say that it's not the same, you know, because like MySpace basically forced you to talk more about yourself, mm-hmm. you know, and like show your favorite song images about yourself. Like now it's like Instagram profiles are private. And sometimes all you get is just a profile picture in the little bio. So you don't even you don't even know if you like click on like some random profile, you know, you don't get to learn about that person, if especially if it's private. Um, but I think that the coolest piece of technology that I would like to like, if it came back, would like be like light up sneakers because I think they're pretty cool. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, no, and I, you know, look, MySpace was very cool, but the top eight, the friend list, that was brutal. Yeah. That experience was very real. <laughs> so I'm glad those are dead at least. <laughs> yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, so in the movie, Chris uh, hasn't seen very many movies. Uh, there, there's a few times where he's getting quizzed on movies that he hasn't seen. Uh, I'm curious if Sean gave you a list of movies to watch before production. No, actually. Uh, and I think maybe that was on purpose just so that I didn't know anything. Um, and to be completely honest with you, I'm actually not a big movie watcher myself. I really only watch movies if my like family is just like, okay, we're actually having a movie night tonight. And like, I just want to stay in my room and play games and like, no, get out of your room, you know? <laughs> and so like, I'm, I live mostly under a rock and I think I need to fix that because I know nothing about pop culture, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Sean gave me no list, no list of movies to watch, which maybe was probably on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Or he you just got, You got to bug him for one now, now on the back end of things. Uh, I will good. for sure. 100%. <laughs> uh, what was it like watching DD with a crowd for the first time? Uh, you were at Sundance, I believe, right? Yeah, that was crazy. It was also mad embarrassing. Like, just <laughs> a bunch of people staring at my face, like, for, like, two hours straight, basically. So, uh, that was awkward. Um, 
I mean, other than that, it's like super, super, super awesome. Like, I mean, the fact that like people actually really do love this movie and that it's becoming like this whole huge thing and it's literally going to be released nationwide at some point. That's cool, you know? And like, I feel like that's like an experience that like very few people get to feel in this world. So I'm grateful for that. Absolutely. Yeah, very excited for more people to see this in theater specifically, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, and well, like I said, my, my last question before letting you go, this this is your first leading role. What did you learn in in making this movie that you'll take into into future roles? Always learn the name of everyone on set. I think that's super important to get close with everyone is learn their names and you can't just call people camera guy one and camera guy two. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's great advice. Sweet. Well, Isaac, again, like I said, can't wait for more people to see this. I love your performance and I love the movie so much. So, uh, so thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Daniel. Awesome. Have a good one.